having the EVM deployed means you have access to all of this pre-audited open source code, all of this tooling, all of these testing frameworks, all of this cookie cutter Lego plug and play code. It, it's like running an emulator. You have the latest version of PlayStation with all the new bells and whistles, that's native ESIO. But then you have a bunch of these really popular classic PS3 games. That's like the EVM. And it allows those to run on EOS. With all of this open source code available in this robust ecosystem, it means that when a new project wants to deploy, they basically just take a couple different code sets that already exist or an entire project, they just clone it or fork it. And then that means that most of their budget for their project is actually going into marketing, community building, incentive programs. These are new developers that are coming into the EOSIO. Again, through the EVM, we've seen new people that are interested that aren't currently in EOS wanting to come and develop on EOS, which is really great. We haven't seen that in a long time. And if you notice in the Pomelo group, for example, we also have two different projects that just came in. One of them is called Old Timers, and there's another project called EO2, which is a carbon capture project that, that is looking to deploy on EOS. And so we're starting to see arguably the first time in a while new projects porting over from other chains wanting to come onto EOS. And the EVM for both of them was, or actually for one of them was quite needed and, and the other one is a, is a different case. All of that is, is working out together and it's pretty cool to see. No, it sounds very promising. I think it'll be really good to get those Solidity developers and working on having a EVM compatible EOS based chain. I think it will have a combination of the speed, but also all the contracts that are built on Solidity to be able to port them over to EOS. So I think that's going to be really amazing to see that happen. Yeah, that's one of the big features that people have been asking for. All the libraries and everything that already exists in the Ethereum ecosystem can be potentially leveraged. And to give an idea as well as what the product team is working on, or I guess other key solutions to support the EVM itself, there's five kind of supporting applications that they're looking at and they're doing research on, which will come about after the public good EVM is deployed or after the functionality itself is now out. It would be a wallet, bridges, decks, a launchpad, and explorer that would fit within the portal, within that kind of EVM ecosystem. And one of the big things is that those block explorers that Ethereum community is used to and the Ether scans and all that stuff, that would be nice to have. Usually Ethereum, like big chains, big applications that do the multi-support, like for example, I know that Sushi Swap usually deploys on every single base chain. So I think there's a few applications that would most likely be the low hanging fruit of support. For sure. So there's a, there's a lot of applications that do have 12 plus chain supports, as long as it's compatible with the EVM. The other initiatives that we're working on, for example, the EOSIO Plus, to actually reduce friction between chains. So for a concrete example, UX has been working on an EOSIO Plus bridge well, if you had EOSIO Trustless Bridge, if you had the EVM that would be compatible through EOSIO chains, now you'd be able to capture developers that come in to the EOSIO ecosystem and are able to deploy and or capture different communities and different value points or what they're looking for in terms of value add. They'd be able to access it multiple different ways. Again, you're just opening more doors.